Assalamu alaikum, good evening, and a very warm welcome from our London studios. I said warm, but it's rather cool and cold in London. Uh, we have with us today a very distinguished person. We'll talk to him and about him in detail after a few minutes, but we would like to go and see a bit of footage from one of his interviews, and I'm sure that you'll like it. Can we have that video, please? Shoyad Anwarul Hafiz, Chikit Shak, Emeritus Professor, Shulek Hawk. একজন সুশিক্ষিত রুচিশীল মানুষ বয়স হয়েছে তবে বয়সের ভারি নব্য নয় মৃদুভাষী শান্ত স্বভাবের তবু যথেষ্ট সচল কর্মচঞ্চল এখনো নিয়ম করে রুগী দেখা অধ্যাপনা পড়াশোনা আর লেখালেখির মাধ্যমে অতিবাহিত হয় তার প্রতিদিনের জীবন well, that was an introduction, a bit of introduction about our very distinguished guest today, Professor Emeritus, Dr. Sayyid Anwarul Hafiz, MBBS, MRCP, and he has worked in so many countries at one of the best hospitals of the world, and we are so lucky to have him with us today. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you today? Yes, I'm feeling very well, thank you. You okay in London? London London weather is not bothering you. <laughs> no, it does bother me. <laughs> but I, I always tried to avoid the winter in London, but we couldn't. Never got used to this London weather. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it is it is a far cry from uh, the, the 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 mild nice. winter of Bangladesh and, yeah. and Bengal. Uh, let us go back. See, you, you went to Calcutta Medical College. You did your MBBS in 1952, I, I think. Yes. And mm -hmm. then uh, later, you went to America for higher studies. You were at, at Pittsburgh. You worked there for some time. Then you traveled back to London because you as you explained uh, in that uh, video of yours, that interview of yours, that uh, in India, people were not impressed by a degree from America, but they would rather be impressed by a postgraduate qualification or fellowship from London. Maybe it is because we were ruled by the Englishman for such a long time and we were brainwashed. <laughs> not only that, you see, in American training, they don't give you any degree or anything that mm -hmm. you can write at the end of your name. Right. And that is very important in our country. Of course. <laughs> Some A to Z should be there behind your name. <laughs> A, B, C, D. Training, training in America was, I must say, was much better quality. Uh -huh. And they used to make us work really hard mm -hmm. there. But, but then I had come to UK. But, but you as doctors, I mean, when you go through the training uh, uh, at, at colleges and hospitals and particularly towards the later part of your degree course, you, see, you have to work very hard, isn't it? Yes, yes. You have to work very hard everywhere. But then there is a quality of hardness in American training, mm -hmm. I think, which is lacking in our place in Calcutta as well as in Britain. Mm -hmm. That's what I have found. Mm -hmm. In America, in hospitals, they just put you into a machine almost. That you have to work hard just to keep up with everybody else. Uh -huh. Some people don't like it, but it certainly gives you a good training as a doctor. Uh -huh. So it's, it's nice, nice that you appreciated that hard work and uh, you, you are saying that people learn a lot of those who go through that hard work. That's very good, you see, because it's, it's all good for the profession of the uh, 
profession of science and medicine because you are going to use that knowledge on your patients, isn't it? Yes, that's right. And they used to tell us that you learn medicine at 2 a.m., not at 2 p.m. Really, <laughs> when you have no other backing, True. you can't. <laughs> you have to depend on yourself. That was the basic thing they had. So you were you were in America for for about two years, isn't? It? Uh, three years. Three years. About okay. three years. Yes. Three years residency training. Right. They call it. Uh, you. Isn't there a system called member of the board or something about examinations in, in, yes, in the state? Yes, there is. A, those who want to become consultants uh -huh. or go into academic jobs, uh -huh. they have to take the uh, board examination. Mm -hmm. But you don't write anything after your name. Right. That's it. So, doctor such and such, MD. Uh -huh. Nothing more. <laughs> so, if he doesn't impress the patients. Yeah, patients. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, when, when you write your CV, people will know that uh, this gentleman yeah. has been yes. to so many places. Yes. Right. Uh, when you were in, at Absolutely. Calcutta, those are very, very significant days in the history of the subcontinent. Uh, from 47 mm. to 52, you were at the medical college, Calcutta Medical College. That's right. And Calcutta was uh, the hub of uh, activities, independence activities. Do you remember something from those days? Yes, yes, a lot of things. I was seven, uh, well, actually, I was in school in Calcutta from 1940, and then in hair school. Then I went to the presidency college, did my ISC there, mm -hmm. and then went to medical college after independence, that is, our course started on October the 1st, I remember, in 1947. Mm -hmm. And we passed through various kinds of problems and, well, so many things like the struggle for independence was there and I was very much involved in that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. The fought with police, thrown brick bats at them, uh, police and the military in 45, 46, 47, those days. And we went through the big thing was in our 1943. I saw the Bengal famine. Yes. Uh, then, you 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 were talking about uh, this Bengal famine uh, uh, in that uh, interview of yours, and you mentioned that uh, a lot of uh, rice or grain pro grain that came. Uh, could not reach the people who were impacted by the famine. That's right. Uh, we were wondering why the uh, rice and the grains were rotting in the botanical gardens there. Uh, th those were supposed to be sent for the fighting troops, uh -huh. but they never reached the troops. Uh -huh. They rotted there and people died on the streets. <laughs> And later on, we found out what was the cause of it. It was totally a man-made famine. Mm -hmm. And it was Winston Churchill, at that time, the prime minister here of uh, uh, Britain. Uh, yes. The, he was personally responsible for it. These were in the cabinet papers, yes. which had come out later on. And they're very, very, very... Uh, derogatory statements uh, that uh, were revealed later that uh, that's right if you go through those meeting minutes yeah. of the cabinet yes uh, you can see those things now but at that time we didn't know the details we knew that it was a man-made famine mm -hmm. Bengal had to be uh, had to suffer not Bihar Orissa or yeah. Yeah. Assam all around Bengal, but it's the Bengalis had to suffer. A, 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 apart from uh, the idea that this uh, this uh, grain or this uh, could be used by the uh, you know warring soldiers, British soldiers or soldiers working on working on the side of the British, was there any other reason? Just uh, I mean, this doesn't come to make much sense. That why would 
uh, such intelligent people like Winston Churchill would adopt that uh, stance, that adopt that uh, posture? Yeah, uh, the reason I think that everybody agrees that in Bengal was the hub of most of these so-called terrorist activities against the British Raj. Uh -huh. There was the Surjo Sen in Chittagong Armory raids and then Binoy Badol, Dibesh, uh, Dinesh, those three of them attacked the uh, uh, writer's building. This is 1930 and one after another, these uh, so-called uh, terrorists mm -hmm. in Midnapur, three of the ICS officers were killed one after another, mm -hmm. just uh, against anti-British things. And nowhere else in India, except a brief little things of Bhagat Singh in Punjab was there. So I think Churchill definitely wanted to have revenge on the Bengalis. Yeah, it is a kind of punishment. That's right. No wonder they say that uh, what uh, Bengal thinks today, India thinks tomorrow. Yes, and, uh, that at that the... time it, was, it used to be t t told that. Uh -huh. But later on, one of our teachers in hair school used to say that because Bengal had fallen behind by that time, mm -hmm. they used to say that what India thinks today, Bengal thinks tomorrow. <laughs> that was, was a kind of <laughs> tongue in the cheek. It was reversed. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but times change, don't they? Yeah. Uh, who were your f classmates uh, during those days? Uh, I mean, w were there a large number of uh, Muslims from uh, the Eastern Bengal? Uh, yes, there were quite a few uh, from Eastern Bengal. And in those days, uh, there was a quota system almost, that is mm -hmm. about 25% mm -hmm. Muslim students had to be admitted in Presidency College, for example, in IA or ISC. So there are quite a few people, important people, uh, for example, I in know IA course. Dhaka University was Just there. This. It was established in 1919. Uh, yes. Uh, but uh, was there the Dhaka Medical College? Dhaka Medical College started in 1946. That is one year before independence. Mm -hmm. uh, after your graduation, you decided to go to America and you did work uh, in various hospitals and Pittsburgh you chose. Pittsburgh, yes. Yes. Any particular University of Pittsburgh Hospital. Any particular uh, reason? The reason was very simple. One of my classmates, Khetravashi Tripathi, he was from Orissa. Uh -huh. So he had worked, he got a job there. So he, I wrote to him and he arranged me this job very easily. In those days, you didn't have to appear in any examination uh, for. Uh, American job. Mm -hmm. So, just on my recommendation from my professors mm -hmm. in Calcutta Medical College, I was taken as a, a resident in internal medicine. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, did you have to use a passport and visa or something? Yes, I, I had to have a passport. Uh, I was living in India at that time. I was born in West Bengal, Murshidabad, mm -hmm. so I could get a Indian passport. Right. That took me a quite a long oh, time. Okay, sir, time to take a break, passport. and when we come back, we will start again with a with a short clip of uh, the video from there. Thank you, thank you for being but with us. They, Don't go away. There will be music in there. Yep. The first part we missed the music. Okay, we'll take a break right. now. We'll be back soon. Welcome back. Just before the break, we were talking to our distinguished guest today, Dr. Sayed Anwar Hafiz, Professor Emeritus. Uh, Dr. Anwar Hafiz has been uh, all over the world to probably 40 countries, he told me. And uh, he is very observer 
went person because he, he wherever he has gone, uh, he has written about uh, those places. But we will talk about his writings later. Uh, I would like you to watch a short clip from uh, one of his previous interviews. Can we have the video, please? So he has this sensitivity about books, he cares about people daughter, and their history. If I take anybody, if he meets anybody, any like a taxi driver or anybody anywhere, and they have, um, um, you know, he'll ask you where are you from, and he'll usually know something about their town or their village or something of local interest to them, almost no matter where they are from in the world. He's not one to... And his son? To lose his temper unnecessarily you know one has to drive him quite far before he snaps so um, <laughs> I've driven him quite far many times but as a grown-up man I, I've never what I love about Abu is his uh, in -law, his sort of caring and level he's very caring and level-headed at the same time and also his his uh, the way he's equally at home in the science as as the arts, you know, he loves his uh, his music and um, and his novels, writing, literature, and uh, but but equally science. So you know, his, the, the balance between the two, I think, is is really interesting. You know, that you don't get many people who have that. Kubi guru gumbir manish chile ne bolu kubi intellectually ato. মানে উচ্চ মানের একজন মানুষ ছিলেন যে আমি একদিন ইয়ে পড়ছিলাম টাইম ম্যাগাজিন তো উনি ঘরে ঢুকবেন দেখে তাড়াতাড়ি করে ধরেছি ধরে এরকম করে পড়ছি তো উনি এসে কিচ্ছু বললেন না কালি এসে ওটা সোজা উল্টো পড়ছি ওটা সোজা করে দিলেন তো খুব কম কথা বলতেন বলেনও এবং বোধ হয় ভবিষ্যতে কম কথাই বলবেন Welcome back. We were watching a clip from uh, one of his interviews uh, that were made earlier. Uh, they say no man is a hero to his family. But now that has been proved wrong because you saw the opinion of the daughter, the son and the wife. And they're all in praise of our very distinguished guest today, Dr. Hafiz. Yes, sir. Are you there? Yes. <laughs> uh, after you returned to Dhaka from uh, London, you wanted to join the medical services there and you told me that there was a very interesting incident because the job was advertised was only for the nationals of the country. At that time it was Pakistan, so you had to be Pakistani. but. Uh, the bright young doctor, Sayyid Anwar Hafiz, had a British passport. And you had to, normally people do not surrender British passport for Pakistani passport, but it was the other way, reversed. And so you had to surrender your British passport to get a Pakistani passport to get that job. <laughs> That's right. How, how, how did you feel about it? Well, uh, I certainly wanted to have a British passport, which will help me in traveling, but that had to be done. And in those days, there was no uh, dual citizenship with Pakistan, so I had to surrender it. But the strange thing was that, even though I surrendered the British passport to Pakistan government, as well as to British Deputy High Commission there, but later on, when I came, to this country again, which I may uh, talk about it later. I wanted to have the British passport back and I applied for it and got the reply from the Home Office that your surrender, the way you surrendered the British passport was not legal. So you had continued to be a British citizen all this time. So if you want to have a passport, you just apply for it and you will get it. So that's what happened. It's rather strange. <laughs> yes, it was. 
Uh, it would be a stranger uh, uh, today. <laughs> Suddenly, <laughs> British passport for That's Bangladesh right. or Indian or Pakistani passport. Uh, after that, you worked at Dhaka Medical College for some time, isn't it? Yes, about two years I was associate professor of Dhaka Medical College. Then I was transferred to Silet Medical College. Mm. Were, the, were those days the, the big beginning of the or the starting of the Silet Medical College? Yes. Slit Medical College had started two years earlier where students were studying the preliminary course, anatomy, physiology, and on third year, the students come to the clinical years. That is, now they are uh, being taught in the wards, examining patients and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I was a clinician, so I was sent there to start the Department of Medicine, which I did. Uh, how many years did you spend at Sidat Medical College? Four years. Four years. And then you returned to Dhaka? Returned to Dhaka, and this time at Sir Salimullah Medical College, uh -huh. where I was a professor of medicine now. Right. Salimullah was used to be in, in, in Dhaka, uh, old Dhaka. Old Dhaka. Near, near, near the river. River, yeah. Yes. It's just on the river practically. And that's a great advantage for many people in Bangladesh. Because um, people sometimes don't understand that during the rainy season, the communication between different parts of the country improves because the rivers and canals are uh -huh. full of water and boat traffic, lots of patients used to come to our uh, medical college in uh, Midford Medical College because of the situation next to the river. They used to come from the boat into the medical college straight away. And sometimes we had to see patients in the boat. But did you have enough beds in the hospitals? Yes. It was a fairly uh, big hospital. It was a medical school originally, and then it was made into a medical college. And there were about 500 beds there. Nowadays, of course, it is much, much bigger. Yeah. But the population of Dhaka has increased, increased so many oh, times. Yes. So. Yeah, that's right. There was a time when Dhaka's population uh, density was about 600 persons per square mile and now right. it is about 6,000 persons per yes. square kilometer. Yes, yes. Right. So it, it makes a lot of difference. Uh, That's <coughs> you were, when you were in Silet, was it then that you became interested in the music of Hassan Raja? Uh, not really. I was interested in music in general, I had heard of Hassan Raja music <laughs> and in Silet, of course, it was much more accentuated. Uh -huh. Yes. How did you become interested in, in, in music? Because you are also oh, very oh. close to, or, or Rabindra Sangeet is very close to your heart. Yes. Rabindra Sangeet, of course, is a separate category. Half of my music <laughs> is for Rabindra Shongit. Uh -huh. The other half, I am very much interested in uh -huh. folk songs all over the world, folk songs and Western classical music. These are my favorite things. I, of course, got uh, introduction more once I came to Europe and the Western classical music. Have, have, have you spent some time at Shanti Niketan? Well, I have visited Santi Nikatan many times. The longest time I spent there was a week, about 15 years ago. We went to see the Posh Mela. Mm -hmm. We are three brothers. All three of us went together at that time. My two elder brothers, both of them have died. I am the only one left, and I am 90 plus now. But that one week in Santiniketan, I definitely enjoyed it very much because of the Poush Mela, 
there. Did, 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 did you find a lot of uh, other doctors uh, whom you met uh, from Bangladeshi origin um, or from Bangladeshi origin, did you find them interested in music and literature and all that? A few, yes, few, yes, certainly. But uh, most of the others who were interested in music, they were musicians themselves. I am not a musician. I don't play any instrument and mm -hmm. I call myself tone deaf. But I enjoy music. I don't know why. It's my uh, the connections of my neurons in the brain. So I am very much moved by music. Yes. Uh, uh, I would like to talk to you about your books and all that, but that I'm keeping for uh, sometime later in the uh, during this uh, talk show. Uh, let's let's re return to London. Uh, uh, in November 1970, you came to London on a Commonwealth uh, Fellowship, isn't it? That's right. Uh, and you worked at Guy's that... Hospital, London Hospital, yes. and uh, Myland Hospital, not yes. very far from here. That's right. Uh, and then you also mentioned somewhere that in 1970, the, the, the cyclone in Bola where thousands yes. died. Mm -hmm. and uh, were you in Dhaka those days? Uh, well, I arrived on the, I will tell you, 10th of November 1970, arrived in London. Uh -huh. And on the television in the hotel, I saw the news of the Vola cyclone. So I have just uh, passed uh, the Vola cyclone for, after one day. I would have seen it if I had delayed my departure another one day, I would have seen it. But Vola Cyclone was so important for the whole of our Mukti Juddho that I always mention it. Lots of people don't understand the importance of the Vola Cyclone. Uh, where were you, uh, where were you during the, the tumultuous times when uh, East Pakistan was turning into a different country. Well, I was spent the whole of that time in London. Uh -huh. I was, as I said, came here on November 1970, and the times were tumultuous in Bangladesh already. It was mm -hmm. not Bangladesh, East Pakistan even then. But uh, then in the whole of 1971, uh, I spent at that uh, here. I was supposed to have gone back to Dhaka at the end of 1971 because the Commonwealth Fellowship was for one year. Yeah. Because of the troubles in East Pakistan or right. became Bangladesh, I couldn't go back at that time and stayed back here. Thank you, sir. We need to take another break. And when we come back, we'll try to explore more on the literary front. Thank you Vyas for being with us. Don't go away. We'll be back soon after this short break. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking to Dr. Sayed uh, Anwar Hafiz about uh, his professional life, his background, his love for music. Now, we look at Dr. Hafiz in a different perspective. A man who has traveled a lot and his ideas that he has learned, his opinions that he, he has been able to form after visiting those places, they reflect in his three books. I'm saying books because uh, they are actually their novels, but uh, with a touch of travelogue, history, romance, and excitement. Uh, Dr. Hafiz. Please, for the benefit of our viewers, can we have a look at those uh, books, at least the cover? Uh, the first book that I wrote was called Teen Bigha Jomi. I don't know if you can yeah. see can this. You, can, yeah, yes, that, now, now it's visible. Yes, Teen Bigha Jomi. Let us talk about Teen Bigha Jomi. What's it about? Yes, this is about 
uh, it is set in Khulna, Jasor, Bagherhat area where there is a lot of uh, Chingri cultivation. Right. And the period is around 2000, uh -huh. year 2000. Uh -huh. And it's about three women who had suffered or had strange experiences in the, during 1971. Right. And uh, how those, some of the Mukti Yodha, how they are leading their life now. Some have become very rich, mm -hmm. others have become very poor, and conflict between themselves has started. This is the background of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the background. See, what is the story? Yes. The story is that one, uh, the three girls that I mentioned, mm -hmm. well, one is the Hindu girl mm -hmm. who, when she was about two years old, her mother was taken away by the uh, Pakistani soldiers mm -hmm. from there. And the person who was responsible for uh, that, he sort of handed over the girl to these Pakistani soldiers because he was pro-Pakistani. Mm -hmm. His younger brother was the was the freedom fighter, mm -hmm. and the Pakistani uh, pro-Pakistani gentlemen they went to Bangla, uh, they went to Karachi at the end of the war, and his wife and child now they wanted to come back to Bangladesh mm -hmm. after twenty years, so. mm -hmm. and he comes back and falls in love with the same girl whose mother had been killed, mm -hmm. Hindu girl. Mm -hmm. The Hindu girl was raised in a, another family, his uncle's family, mm -hmm. and they eventually get married through a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. Naturally, Hindu girl, one is a uh, pro-Pakistani so-called, uh, and the other is a Mukti Yodha's son. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends were also not very happy that uh, Mukti Yodha's son gets married to a mm, uh, so-called uh, Virangona's daughter. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I, I wanted to <laughs> provoke some people in this kind yeah. of peculiar situation. Yes. And the other, other was a young doctor whose father and his and her uh, boyfriend, they were both killed on the operation table. Something like that happened in while uh, I was in Silet. Well, after I left Silet, Professor Samsuddin was brought out from the, uh, from the uh, operation theater where he was operating on uh, a Mukti Yodha. Mm -hmm. And he was killed right outside that operation theater and his dead body their dead body lay there for two days, something like that. I have introduced that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But mm. they are very, they reflect the reality, isn't it? This yes, case. that's right. These things are all has happened. Mm. And the other girl was a result of a rape by a Pakistani soldier mm -hmm. on a Bangladeshi girl. Mm -hmm. And she, her mother, uh, who committed suicide uh, because of the rape and she asked or wrote to this girl before she died that you should grow, when you grow up, you should take revenge upon all those people who try to rape women. So these three women, their lives have been woven together. They all know each other and they have been woven together on the background of this Chingri cultivation area. Mm -hmm. What is the conclusion of that uh, very well-written uh, uh, story? Uh, uh, the conclusion was that the uh, Hindu girl and the Muslim boy, they get married and there was indication that they will be happy even though the, uh, the girl has not been converted to Islam. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that I wanted to <laughs> provoke. Some people. Yep, yep. it's provoking into, into thinking and, and, and to, yes, to challenge right. their own uh, yes. uh, long held views. That's right, and these have happened. 
this is this kind of thing has happened. That's why I put them back. In, sure. Put them this in is like novel. like love. Love knows yes. no bounds. Transcend, transcends everything. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 that's very interesting. And and what about the second book of yours? The second book was based could very we, much on my. Could we have a look at it? Uh, the cover. Ah, yes, the second book is called. Yeah, can can you yes sir. to me to to towards uh, yes yeah that's it towards your right to yes. me Shondhar Megawala towards your right can you move it to towards your yes. right hand no 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 oh, yeah, right p p p yeah please put it in the <laughs> center yeah no that's far away <laughs> N near your face yeah that's it yes that's it uh, thank you right. okay thank you so to me Shondhar Megawala is a famous. Rabindra Shongit. Mm -hmm. So this is the first line. You are the cluster of evening cloud. Mm -hmm. Now the, the uh, background of this is in Pakistan. During my travels from China to Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, one of the best travel that I have done about 26 days, and we crossed from China into Pakistan, which, uh, in the area where there are these mountains. And those mountains are the uh, what? Very, yes. very, very, very <laughs> rugged mountains. They are not. Yes, <laughs> yes. They are very rugged mountains where the Mount K2 is there. Yes. The in, second highest mountain. In, inhospitable mountains. They are not very yes. hospitable. Uh, most uh, accidents that happen in those mountains, climbers. So how, how did I you how did you travel? We travel with all kinds of uh, 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 a motor car, bus, train, plane, mm -hmm. camel ride, all mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. And we went into the Karakoram Highway. Yeah. One of the, I would say, the, one of the eighth wonder of the world. It's a beautiful scenery and the way the highway has been built. Is is amazing, is amazing, and it's a comp it's a collaboration of China and Pakistan. Which year yeah, was that? This was in year two thousand one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And there is a uh, mountain peak called Rakaposhi, right. which is uh, slightly less than eight thousand meters height. And what so, was the kind of weather there? I mean, it was it. Uh, Summer or well, winter? But when I went there, it was summer. It was September. Uh -huh. It was quite pleasant at that uh, place. And the place I was most impressed by was called Karimabad. Mm -hmm. It was named after Prince Aga Khan. Uh, yep. Karim. Yes, Prince uh, Karim Aga Khan, yes. Karim Aga Khan. And that area is mostly inhabited by Shia Muslims. And Karim Aga Khan Foundation has produced a wonder there, I would say. Almost 100% literacy among the Shia community. And surrounding this area, there are the uh, Sunni areas where the, yeah. uh, they are still much, much backward. Mm -hmm. is, so this, the, is this called Hunza? Hunza, exactly, Hunza area. Mm -hmm. We have got the so let's Hunza. get let's get back to your book. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the the two persons or the three persons who are there. It's actually a, it's a triangular love affair. Mm -hmm. There is a Bangladeshi boy who wants to become a mountaineer, but he has no training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he accidentally mm -hmm. sort of okay. comes okay. across this Pakistani. Mountaineer who is also a PhD in geography. Right. Pakistani boy takes him, <coughs> our Bangladeshi boy, under his wing. He goes through the training of mountain <coughs> mountaineering and they go up the Rakaposhi mountain. There, the Pakistani mountaineer, <coughs> he meets his death, he dies there, mm -hmm. trying to rescue 
this Bangladeshi boy, <coughs> the leader of the expedition, <coughs> excuse me, leader of the expedition says that this is a mountaineering accident. <laughs> the boy's mother says this Bangladeshi boy is the cause of the death of my son. <laughs> So he has murdered this, my son, and uh, the girl who is, both of them love this girl, she says that the young man had committed suicide. A good cushy, he says. Uh, Dr. Shab, we do not have much time left here, but about, about three minutes, you see. <coughs> so can we move on to uh, your third book quickly? Yes. The third book is? Yes. Rupe Tomai Bola Bona, which is also another <coughs> first line of a Rabindra Shongit. So this is about a young girl who is a Tibbati Nepali girl, mm -hmm. who is not so pretty, but she is a very <coughs> important scientist, nuclear physicist or particle physicist. And our young man from Bangladesh, he is a journalist. They come together and they fall in love with each other, but they never marry. After 70 years almost, they remain in two different countries because they have different profession, different religion, but they love each other all the time. And eventually uh, they come at the, when the girl dies in Nepal, he comes and meets uh, her there, and this is the kind of you, you, Doctor uh, Hafiz. Your books have uh, been reviewed, uh, have received rave reviews by none other than Doctor Gohar Rizvi and uh, Professor Sirajul Islam uh, and others. See, I mean, Doctor Gohar Rizvi talking about it. He said that uh, this is not just a novel, but it's a, a study in history. It's close to reality. Uh, you have uh, led a very distinguished life, very active, very productive, mashallah. Uh, anything you would like to pass on to you, the younger generation, not necessarily the doctors, but the younger generation growing up everywhere? Yes, I would always like to tell them to keep their eyes and ears open. There are many things besides your own profession that is going all, ar all around you. Mm -hmm. And you should try to be a complete human being, sort of, so that it may be any profession you are. But you must <coughs> know the world. And mm -hmm. music is one of the important things, to know the world. Music is a, again is a is a leveler. It 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 transcends all the borders. Yes, that's right. It it has no language. No language. So everybody no. should understand it or appreciate it. Yeah, I enjoy it. <coughs> yes, it uh, improves your life. It definitely. It's. A, are you also into singing? No. <laughs> I am I'm totally atonal person. <laughs> I can't sing at all. One of my regrets of life is that, that I can't sing. I, when I have to hear some music, I have to ask or request some other people, other person to sing it for me. <laughs> uh, uh, do, do you like Western music? Yes, Western classical music I mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. Anybody who, them, anybody who likes Rabindu Sangeet would like Western classical music, isn't it? Probably, yes, yes, I would say so. Yep. Yes, Shatujit Rai says that three B's in his life was very important. Beethoven, Brahms and uh, Bach. Yeah. The three B's are very important in his life. Thank you very much, sir, for giving me time and uh, giving us at NTV time, valuable time. And it was a pleasure hosting you, talking to you. And we wish that uh, we will have another uh, 
uh, interview with you, another talk show with you, inshallah. That will be totally based on music, your love for music. Okay. If you <laughs> Thank agree. Thank you very much. If you yes, agree. Yes. If you agree. But we must hear the music in that time. Yes, of course. We must Today. hear the music from you. <laughs> Thank you very much okay. for being with us Thank and you. thank you for uh, listening to this wonderful program, uh, our wonderful guest today. Uh, same time, same channel next week. We meet again. In the meantime, take care. Thank you.